and I am a basket maker. I make birch bark baskets. It's what my grandpa did. Uh, I got the bug when I was about six years old. I just always wanted to make a birch bark canoe. I have no idea why. Uh, he was a canoe maker and we talked about it, but I never wanted to be a baseball player or anything. I just wanted to make birch bark canoes. Bark doesn't rot, it's virtually rot resistant. The weakest link on this canoe would be the roots. You might have to replace those. Cedar's very rot resistant. And birch bark is virtually rot resistant. I mean, you can walk through the woods and find tubes of birch bark where all the wood inside is rotted out because the bark is so, so full of resins and oils, uh, it just doesn't rot. Uh, it'll get dry and brittle. It'll discolor after a while, but as long as you keep this thing fairly moist and out of direct sunlight, it'll be, it'll just last forever. But yeah, this is all just set up for baskets or wigwams. Um, I got all kinds of different materials, summer bark, winter bark. Your bait, it's all the same stuff. It just depends on the time of year you gather it. When you peel it in the summer, it comes off this yellowy color. Um, that's the color of the bark. Um, when you peel it in the winter, it brings off just a really thin rind of the inner bark, and uh, which dries to a dark, dark brown, as you can see right here. When you and you have to have the winter bark to do the etching, obviously, because all you do when you etch is just wet this and scratch away. And all I'm doing here is just scratching away that winter bark rind. It takes a long time. It's really time consuming, the etching. It's my favorite part too, so, and unfortunately it's, uh, I don't get to do enough of it. That's why I'm making these panels now, because I just glue the bark onto a panel and I can etch a, etch a design. I stock up for the year and uh, you know, try to keep enough, because I mean, I'm actually doing, I'm trying to make a living doing this and somehow I manage, but sometimes it's tough. <laughs> so I got no problem killing a tree you know, for, to make a beautiful canoe out of. I mean, in the way I look at it, it's like giving it a beautiful epitaph, maybe. I mean, I see a lot of crimes against nature when I'm out in the woods. I see clear cuts and spraying and everything, so I don't feel bad about taking one tree. This is a basic, these two are a little bit different, as you can yeah. see. This is a more traditional style right here. Uh, it's just a basic folded. Just like that. That's your most basic folded form right there of a berry basket. I call these berry baskets. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would do. And then you just... There you have it. And these, I've been loving these things. <clears throat> I was using scissors for a while. Yeah, they work good for bark. <laughs> And you can make them any size. Uh, I, I, I make big folded pieces. As you lay the, the pattern down on the, uh, you have to really, you have to look under these corners and see if you're landing right on an eye. If it's really good flexible bark, like this stuff, remember how I said I could yeah. tell this is gonna bend well? Because you can feel the flex in it if you do it. So you can kind of tell that that's gonna bend really well. And uh, I cut the patterns out when it's dry, but then before I fold them, I'll soak it for a while. It's, it's, it's a bark quality thing. They do a test. The way I do that is, I wish we had a tree here, is I just, I just put the knife in and do a little, and then I peel off a little chunk, and I wiggle it, see how thick it is in the first place. Uh, you know, if it was any thinner than that, I really wouldn't want it. These roots here are, are probably white spruce. Uh, they haven't been soaked a long time. You can even see now that these, since these have been soaking for a few days, that they're already starting to darken up. And there's spruce all around us. They're on the smaller side. Which means we might find some smaller roots. There's some bigger stuff out there. Open ground, mossy ground, on sandy soil. Not many big rocks. Uh, so we'll see what we find. 
And there's one right there. It's a good size. <laughs> See, they're about two inches under there. There's another one. Some people in historical records you'll see black spruce. Black spruce favors boggy ground. Um, red spruce, white spruce. They all work good. Even balsam roots work, I think. You know, the, some split better than others. Some have a little different coloration. But all the spruces work good for me. Half hours work right there. If I do that, you know, work out here for three hours, I'll have three or four of those. And then the splitting process is, th see these have been split once down the middle, uh, but I soaked them longer because what I do is I split the heart out. And uh, as I do that, these little branches and little imperfections will come off when I do that and it makes it more pliable. So I'll just, and then that's the process right there. But I'm controlling the split as I go by, I can, I can feel it. Uh, this one's splitting really easy. They don't always split this easy. Some people split like this. Stevie splits like this. Okay. I, I've never been comfortable doing it that way. I have this little one-handed technique. So, and I think it's a beautiful aspect of Wabanaki culture. Obviously, these canoes are, they amaze everyone. You know, they, they're, they're a very highly refined product of this forest, you know, and all you need to do it is one of these.